Uh, now we turn our, to our presentation of our, our two, the two oldest National Academy of Engineering honors for individual achievement, the Simon Ramo uh, Founders Award and the Arthur Ambika Award. The uh, previous award winners for the, uh, the uh, Founders Award are, are here today. I think Bob Langer, if I haven't seen him yet, but he is one, uh, going to be here. Bob Niram, who I've seen, is here. Nick, Nick Pepis is here as, as a Founders Award winner. And for Beak Award winners, Eric Block and Anita Jones. I haven't seen Eric, but Anita's here, and Eric is supposed to be here. The uh, si Simon Ramo Founders Award honors an outstanding NAE member or foreign member who has upheld the ideals and principles of the NAE throughout professional, uh, educational, and personal uh, achievements. The Founders Award was renamed and endowed by the Keck Foundation last year in honor of Cy Ramo's 102nd birthday as he is the, the remaining founder, founding member and original inductee to the NAE. Now, the Arthur Ambika Award uh, uh, essentially recognizes an engineer who has been uh, actively uh, involved in determining U.S. science and technology policy, promoting technological development, and contributing to the enhancement of relations between industries, government, and universities. Dr. Bika was a senior vice president uh, for corporate technology at General Electric and a member of the Council of the NAE who spoke constantly on the advancement of technology. I'm very pleased to, to note for all of you that his daughter, Tina, a, a big backer, always comes here, and Tina is here with us today, uh, sitting in the audience, along with her son, John, and, and uh, with uh, his wife, Sarah Kelly, and his son, Jacob. So thank you all, uh, Tina, John, J Jacob. And I haven't met Jacob, but are you there, Jacob? Good. Well, thank you, too, for coming very much. Um, uh, I, th I also thank, by the way, the uh, 2015 Awards Committee for its work in carrying out the, these important uh, award selection responsibilities. The committee is chaired by uh, uh, Gerald Galloway, Jerry Galloway, who is the Glenn L. Martin Institute Professor uh, of Engineering at the University of Maryland in College Park, and Jerry Galloway, as the chair, will, will present the awards. So Jerry, if you'd come to the, come to the stage, and uh, uh, Chad and uh, Deborah, you can also come, and we will sit appropriately over here while Jerry carries out the honors. It's great. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Dan. It's a distinct pleasure to be able to present these awards to two deserving individuals. First, I'd like to thank the other nine members of the awards committee for going through the process, which took several months to identify and screen the award nominees and to go through the struggle of picking from such a great group of nominees the individuals we selected. It gives me great pleasure now to present the Simon Ramo Founders Award to Dr. Linda P.B. Katehi for her leadership in engineering research and education. She is the first woman to receive this award, which was established initially in 1965. As Chancellor of the University of California, Davis, Dr. Kadehi oversees all aspects of the university's teaching, research, and public service mission. She is praised for her work on expanding research opportunities for undergraduates and improving the education and professional experience of the graduate students, with an emphasis on women in underrepresented groups. Further, she established the UC Davis World Food Center in an effort to tackle critical issues such as how to feed a growing planet in an environmentally friendly way and to advance the nexus between food and human health. An electrical engineer at the heart and an exemplary leader for all of us, I am proud to bestow the Simon Ramo Founders Award on Dr. Linda P.B. Katehi. Please join us. I may read the citation. Linda P.B. Katehi is hereby honored as the third recipient of the Simon Ramo Founders Award for visionary leadership in engineering research, entrepreneurship and education, and for national advocacy of higher education as a major driver of the U.S. economy. Signed, Chad Halliday, Chairman, Dan Moat, President. <laughs>
Thank you so much. This is a tremendous honor to be here today with so many accomplished colleagues, professionals, engineers, and to receive the 2015 Simon Ramo Founders Award of the National Academy of Engineering. Herbert Hoover, the only engineer to serve as president of the United States, called engineering a great profession. And I can tell you he was certainly correct. There is the satisfaction of watching a figment of the imagination emerge through the aid of science to a plan on paper, he said. Then it moves to realization into stone or metal or energy. Then it brings homes to men and women. Then it elevates the standard of living and adds to the comforts of life. This is the engineer's high privilege. For me, it has always felt like a privilege to be an engineer and to be recognized and appreciated by one's peers in this way is a truly wonderful feeling. I always wanted to be an engineer since I was very young. Watching America's first moon landing on a neighbor's television set in my little village on an island off the shore of Greece many years back, it was really what made me think of engineering as what I wanted to go for as the profession that I wanted to have. I'm not sure I could have told at that time what an engineer would do or did, but when I saw those calm, self-assured scientists at Mission Control managing the Apollo 11 spacecraft from the ground, everything so precise and perfect, I was inspired. It took my breath away and I told myself that's what I wanted to do. Our astronauts were brave, courageous pilots and technicians, but it was those brilliant engineers who did so much to make that historic mission a success and put a man on the moon that inspired me. Apollo 11 and the engineers who planned it opened a universe of possibilities for our nation and for so many young boys and girls who were inspired by what they saw on TV, just like me. As the first woman to receive this award, I'm extremely proud and grateful. There were challenges along the way for sure, but the work and the search for the answers always saw me through. And I know as our field becomes more diverse, there will be many more women and underrepresented groups to win this and other awards. Throughout my career, and especially now as Chancellor at the University of California, Davis, I have had many opportunities to mentor women engineers. Many of these young women were inspired to enter the field by some of the same reasons as me. It may not have been the Apollo mission that drove them, but hands on science and the search for innovative solutions to advance mankind make for exciting and gratifying work. As all of you appreciate, engineers are innovators. We solve problems. We find solutions when there is a need. Even when a solution can be very elusive to others. Across all the engineering disciplines represented by the National Academy of Engineering, we help the world overcome obstacles and adversity. We find new ways to treat disease and supply water energy, and neither vital resources to people, cities, and farms. We design bridges, dams, and airports. We design communication networks and defense systems that keep people safe. In my own case, much of the research I have done over my career focused on the development and characterization of planar and three-dimensional integrated circuits and antennas with emphasis on high-frequency effects. My colleagues and I were fortunate enough to achieve some important breakthroughs and launch companies, small and large, companies that created jobs and sparked economic development. Unfortunately, I don't believe the general public is fully aware of the extraordinary role that innovation, much of it from engineers, has played in creating economic opportunity and prosperity in America and around the world. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, since the 1940s, two-thirds of America's economic growth is attributable to growing productivity that results from innovation, 
with much of that innovation advanced by engineers like us. From the different subdisciplines of chemical, civil, electrical, mechanical, engineering, bioengineering, biomedical, and computer engineering, have come discoveries and technological advances that have changed the face of the world. We have collect collectively come up with innovations that have improved quality of life for hundreds of millions of people and created untold economic benefits across our planet. From the environment to energy, from cybersecurity to clean water, from public health to transportation and national security, engineers have been at the forefront of countless monumental steps forward for civilization. And we know that locked inside those steps have been powerful drivers of economic growth and development. To cite just one example, the Brookings Institute reported a few years ago that each 10 percentage point increase in broadband participation adds 1.3 percent to the gross domestic product of a high-income country such as the United States. That translates into billions and billions of dollars. Advances achieved by electrical engineers in digital technology have enabled people to utilize new tools such as GIS mapping, telemedicine, virtual reality, online gaming, supercomputing, video on demand, video conferencing, and so much more. These tools drive our economy just as computer engineers drove our economy by pioneering the internet and so many of the communications advances vital to small and large companies alike. Engineering breakthroughs have created whole new industries and opened up new careers for millions of people everywhere. So there is no question engineers play a profound role in coming up with the products, breakthroughs, and discoveries that build companies, create jobs, improve our quality of life, and keep America competitive and economically robust. By advocating on behalf of engineers since its creation in 1964, the National Academy of Engineering has been central to many of these innovations. By advancing our profession, you have advanced the well-being and economic health of our nation and of the people who live in there. I want to thank the Academy and its members for the extraordinary work you all do. I want to thank you again for this wonderful honor, which I will treasure always. But before I finish, I wanted to thank my family, uh, my husband and my, uh, my t our children who are here with me, because they have been part not just of my life, but of my career as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you so very much for those inspiring remarks and for your service uh, now and in the future.